Just a few years ago, the cost of living in Phoenix, Arizona was a lot less than most other states. Now it's gone up quite a bit. How much more? Well, in this video, we're gonna tackle everything from rent, utilities, gym passes, car insurance, even a night out. And hopefully you'll come away with a better understanding of just what it takes to live here in the Phoenix metropolitan area. Welcome to my channel, my name is Ryan Meeks, and if you're looking to escape to Arizona, I am a realtor here with eXp Realty. You can call, text, email, even set up a Zoom meeting with the links below. Would love the opportunity to chat with you and tell you how we can make your move super smooth. Now, when I first moved here seven years ago, the cost of living index was around a 95. Now, 100 is the baseline measurement, and that meant that we were considered below the national average here in Arizona. And I'll tell you what, I definitely look forward to moving from Illinois to Arizona. But the thing is now it sits at 107.4. So our cost of living relative to the rest of the United States has jumped. So let's break down where these costs are exactly. Now our biggest jump, in case you haven't noticed, has been in housing and rent. So housing costs, rent have gone up tremendously over the past few years. In 2020, they jumped 22%, and in 2021, they jumped another 22%. So this means that if you bought a home for 400,000 uh, back in 2020, it would be worth 600,000 in just two years. Now, we did get a small break in prices in June of 2022. Now, this was the beginning of the rising mortgage rates that came with the result of the Fed funds rate getting an increase. So prices came down about 10% in June of 2022 from June to about January of 2022. And as a result of this, we've seen the price increase in the housing index for Arizona specifically went from a 105 to a 122, meaning that it's about 22% higher than the national average. And in fact, there are only 11 states that have higher housing prices than Arizona. Now, some of them are super drastic, such as California, which has a 204 index. So what can you expect to pay for housing prices currently? Well, apartments and rental prices are really gonna vary based on taste and location, as you can imagine. But the single family home rental average for 1,200 to 1,500 square feet is $1.54 per square foot, according to the Cromford Report, which is a statistical measurement that comes out pretty much every month. Now, this comes out to about $2,250 per month for a 1,200 to 1,500 square foot homes. And this doesn't even include utilities. Now, if you're looking to purchase a home that's between 12 and 1,500 square feet, that's gonna be about $375,000. Now, let's say you have some in-laws you can't get rid of and you're looking for a little bit of a bigger place and you wanna get like a 3,000 to 3,500 square foot place. Well, homes rented out at this uh, size would be about $1.19 per square foot and that comes out to about $3,867 per month. Now, if you're looking to purchase the same home, you're gonna be looking at a price tag of about $860,000. I do have a mortgage calculator, by the way, on my website, which you can use without signing up, signing in, or anything. It's absolutely free, and it's one of the better ones that I've seen online. I'm not not lying to you guys, trust me. It tells you exactly what you're paying towards the principal and interest, and you can plug in items like insurance, PMI, taxes, HOA fees. It even has a bi-weekly payment option if you're trying to pay the home off early, and that's gonna be linked down below as well. Now, in the case above at $375,000, if you're putting down 20%, adding in the other fees with an interest rate of about 7%, according to my calculator, you're looking at about a payment of uh, $2,370 per month. Now, talking about those pesky homeownership fees, home insurance is going to cost anywhere from about $800 to $1,200. And for my home, we pay $1,097 per year, and we have about 2,900 square feet with a pool. Now, luckily, we're not paying those Florida premiums. Otherwise, I'll probably be bankrupt. You'll also most likely be paying HOA dues anywhere on average from about $30 to about $120 per month. And uh, one thing to keep in mind with HOA dues is that uh, you know they're going towards things like 
making sure the grounds looks nice, making sure the pools are kept up. There's a lot more in Arizona that those HOA fees are going towards. I used to live in Brookville, Illinois, and I'll tell you, we gave money directly to our village instead of having an HOA, and they really didn't give anything in return. Here we have a lot of different activities, things for the kids, community events. It's really nice to see our money actually go towards something. So not complaining about HOA fees. And if you're moving here, you're more than likely going to have them. Now don't get me wrong, there are homes with no HOA fees and there are homes with higher HOA fees. So the highest HOA fee that I've ever seen, I'm sure you're really interested in knowing this, uh, the highest I've seen are HOA dues on condos in Optima's Camel View Village, which is a pretty stellar condo complex located right next to Scottsdale's Fashion Square Mall. The condo complex has everything from uh, basketball courts, swimming pools, resort style pools, uh, and there's also 23 acres of what's called roof gardens. So this place has a lot to maintain. The HOA dues on a $2.7 million condo here are $2,667 per month. So if you're worried about paying $30, you know, that $2,667 per month bill is uh, going to be pretty rough. So if you have any interest in that condo, you know who to call, right? A few other home maintenance costs I want to touch upon. You're going to have lawn care, pool care if you have a pool and you don't want to maintain it yourself. And then you're going to have pest control if you choose to uh, treat your home for scorpions and other random bugs that uh, happen here in Arizona. So uh, for landscaping, my family and I, we pay $80 every other week. I think it's a pretty good deal. We have a pretty large lot and a lot to clean up. So I would think that it would probably be somewhere between $40 and $60 every other week. If that is a service you're looking to get, landscaping definitely going to save your back and your hands because things here grow like weeds. So I'd recommend doing that. Also, if you're looking to um, have pool maintenance, that's going to be between $100 and $150, just depending upon the size of the pool. Expect to maybe pay somewhere up around $125. Now, if you wanna take care of your pool on your own, if you have a saltwater pool, it is very easy. Feel free to call me. I can run through that with you, but I have a saltwater pool and super easy to maintain, so I don't pay anything per month. Don't even have to buy chlorine tabs. So also, the final thing you'll want is pest control. Pest control is gonna be about $100 per month. You will get some people that will try to lock you into really long contracts. Don't do that. You can find somebody and just pay them month to month. It's absolutely doable. You don't have to go with one of the big companies. And that is what I recommend for home maintenance uh, items when you purchase a home, or in some cases, if you're renting, you will be responsible for those costs. Now, apartments are going to be the cheaper route when it comes to making the move right out the bat. So for your typical apartment, um, you're gonna be averaging anywhere from $1,500 and up, depending upon where you're looking, how many amenities you want, um, and just you know which location matters to you as well. So $1,500 is probably gonna be the cheapest that you can find. In nicer areas, you're gonna be looking around $2,000. Now, one of the nicest apartment complexes I've seen is the Tyler in Gilbert, Arizona. These apartments range from $1,400 all the way up to just under $5,000 per month. You'll also have to pay your own utilities at most apartment complexes, so keep that in mind if you're not used to that. Now we've talked about the cost of how much it is to live in a dwelling, let's talk about the cost of utilities. Now for internet, we use Cox, and I feel that it's the most reliable. That's gonna be about 150 bucks per month for its unlimited plan, and you should get plenty of bandwidth for things like you know video games, uh, two or three people being on TVs. My family, they're on multiple devices, and while I'm not either eager to brag to you about this, we have usually uh, have three TVs on, a gaming device, and uh, you know I'm usually uploading stuff to the internet. So uh, there's no issues with that. And there's also fiber internet that they're gonna be building in new homes, and they're also making their way with fiber to the older communities here in Arizona. So Arizona does have fiber. Now our bill for natural gas was $39 in September. Not really that much, but it can get up to as high as $120 in the winter when we use it to heat our hot tub and to run our fireplace. I know first world problems over here, tell me about it. And let me tell you, I'm in that hot tub quite a bit in the winter months. Now the scariest bill that nobody looks forward to, and I definitely did not look forward to uh, when I moved here, is the electric bill. Obviously with newer homes, you're gonna have much more energy efficiency than some of the older homes, which is pretty obvious, right? But popping up on the screen here is a survey 
uh, the results from a survey rather that I took on my YouTube channel asking people about the cost of their electric bill in July, which is pretty much gonna be peak season for running those AC units. And as you can see, they range widely. The lowest price bill was a condo that is occupied by a woman I know, and her bill was $113 for 1,200 square feet, which translates to 9.4 cents per square foot. And the highest price bill was a 3,600 square foot home, which had a $655 electric bill, translating to double at 18 cents per square foot. Now the average cost, if you took all of these, was $376 for a 2,220 square foot home. Now there were some deviations from the average and the highest priced per square foot was a home that was $504 for only 1,215 square feet, which is insane. If you ask me, I'd say get those uh, ducks checked for leaks or do something. There's gotta be something that they can do. There's actually a rebate plan you can get through the electric company um, for people to go up into your attic and make sure that your ducks are secure so you're not losing AC. Now my personal electric bill for my 2,900 square foot home maxed out this summer at $591 in August, which was um, kind of crazy, but that's just how it is here. Our lowest bill was $106 in February. And keep in mind, this includes running a pool pump for about 18 hours per day. Now typically the town you live in or the city is gonna ha handle your uh, water, sewer, and trash. Now our bill is roughly $150 for a family of five between the three of those. And we have an 1,800 square foot rental property and that bill is gonna be around $100 per month. When we first moved here, gas, gasoline, was about 50 cents less than Illinois and I thought it was a screaming deal. Now I look at the prices on gasbuddy.com, I can see we're almost at $5 per gallon. We're sitting right around $4.50. Um, but you know what? I would still rather drive my 2010 Avalanche at 15 miles per gallon than to purchase a new electric car financed at $1,000 per month for five years. But that's me, I don't know about you guys. I definitely wish I had a fancy new car though. Now, if you're thinking about moving here and maybe you don't want a car, you wanna rely on public transportation, it's probably not the best idea. Phoenix has one of the worst transportation systems I've seen in any big city, especially kind of stemming out to the suburbs. It has a light rail system that is slower than Grandma Betty, and the suburbs offer a small busing system, but I don't really see too many buses, and I'm not, uh, I'm not sure what the routes are. I don't take the buses. However, it is an option, but I really think you're gonna need a vehicle to get around. And because of this, Arizona has a transportation index of 105. And the largest cost you'll see that surprises most newcomers when they come here is the registration fee. If you have a newer car, you're gonna be paying more than those with older cars. And if your car was more expensive, you'll pay more than someone with a less expensive purchase. Now, let me give you guys an example. All right, let's say you purchased a brand new shiny Camaro for $50,000 in 2023. Registration is gonna cost you $840. If you bought a used 2017 car for $30,000 in 2023, you're gonna be paying just $180. So it's not only based on the year, it's also based on the amount that you paid for it. And if you wanna play around with like a calculator uh, where you can plug in your own numbers, it's located at the link below. Feel free to dive in and see what it would cost for your registration here. Driving in Arizona is no piece of cake either, and you'll probably notice that there are a lot more accidents than where you're coming from. And I mean a lot more. So car insurance is gonna be a bit higher here as well. Now, right now, I don't like to brag that we have a 2023 Kia Telluride that we paid a lot for. Um, we're still paying for it, it's not paid off. Insurance on this guy, $1,700 per year for, for full coverage. And my vehicle, the sweet 2010 Chevy Avalanche, that's much more manageable. It's $1,100 per year. Both of those aren't cheap. I can't believe we're paying that much for both cars, but I run into a few stationary items here and there, so it's come in handy. And by stationary items, I mean light poles and uh, flatbed trailers that are just parked. Now let's get into my favorite family event, and that is grocery shopping. I love grocery shopping. Arizona isn't too shabby in this department. We have an index position of 101.3. Now, I have a family of five. I can tell you it's not cheap. Now, please note we purchase organic, grass-fed, premium food. We're really worried about what goes into our bodies. I know most people are kind of worried, but kind of on the fence about 
you know, go back and forth. So we purchased from three or four different stores to get everything we need. That includes Sprouts, Trader Joe's, Costco, and sometimes we go to Whole Foods. I was chatting with the missus and we spend on average $1,500 per month on groceries. Now this is pretty insane. I'm guessing you'll probably be able to save a few pennies and spend less than we do. Taxes, what are taxes here? Everybody loves paying taxes. So property taxes, that's one of the main reasons why we made the move to Arizona. We had a $320,000 home in Illinois. That's what we sold it for. We paid $9,000 a year in taxes. Now for a $360,000 home here in Arizona, our bill was $2,500 per year. So roughly uh, per year, that was a $5,500 savings and it took $458 off the mortgage payment every month. Now, in Illinois, one thing that would rattle us every year was our taxes going up. Each year, we'd have a shortage in our escrow account of like a thousand or more dollars, and then come tax time, like we were trying to figure out how we were gonna pay that, and you know, we'd also have to um, try to appeal the taxes, because you'd hear that one person down the block got their taxes lowered, and I, I honestly think it was just some real estate attorneys uh, putting a rumor out there to drum up some business because we'd pay these attorneys and our taxes would never go down. And here in Arizona, it's nice to not be, uh, it's nice to have our money go towards the principal payment and interest rather than taxes. Income tax in Arizona. Your income tax will be taxed at 2.5% as a flat tax starting in 2024. Compare that with different states like California that have nine income tax brackets going all the way up to like 13.3%. Can you like imagine how much money you will save if you move from California to here? Of course, there's other states like Washington and Texas that don't have state income tax, but I think two and a half percent is a pretty tolerable amount to pay if you're gonna live here. One thing to keep in mind, if you are retiring here, Arizona does not tax social security benefits. Now let's get into some fun extracurricular activities that we all love because of course, we aren't gonna enjoy life spending money on taxes, rent and car insurance, are we? Now let's talk about a night out. Phoenix and its suburbs have a ton of comedy clubs and that's one of our favorite go-to date nights. If you wanna go out to your favorite comedy club, expect to spend about 25 bucks per person to get in and you are gonna have a two drink minimum. If you're buying food there, expect to spend an extra 15 to $20. So grand total for two people at your local comedy club is gonna be around $120 at least, depending on how much you indulge. But good news, the parking is free. Here's a bonus tip. If you're looking to go out in Gilbert, there is a comedy club called JP's Comedy Club and they are always giving away free tickets. Now there is a two drink minimum here as well. Typically, you can expect to spend at least $10 per drink and up to $20 at any classy bar or restaurant for that drink. My favorite drinks here are Bloody Mary's at Oso, and um, those are $11, so not too bad, but you know, I think gone are the days of a seven, $8 drink that are halfway decent. Beer still costs that much though, so if you like beer. Now for any halfway decent type of restaurant, you can expect to pay at least $16 and up for a tasty meal. I've noticed prices going into the $20 here for a decent entree. And one of my favorite places that I enjoy going is uh, Buck and Rider. It's an upscale lunch and dinner restaurant with super fresh seafood. Our last bill at Buck and Rider was over $200 for just two of us. Honestly though, I, I wasn't a fan of the drinks. That was kind of unfortunate, but really great food. Uh, a little bit more on the pricey side, but definitely worth it. Are you thinking about having a pizza party? Our two favorite pizza places are Vero's and Salerno's. They're not cheap either. Those pizzas go for about $20 to $25 per pie. And the rough part about it is that they don't even deliver unless you use like a third party DoorDash service. And um, that's not cheap. Now there are some cheaper options like Domino's or Hungry Howie's, which has the worst pizza in the world, by the way. Um, these pizzas will run you about $10. So there's always that option. So something that's pretty important to me is knowing the cost of a gym membership. Now the good news is that gym memberships, just like other places around the country, can start as little as $10 per month. So this would be your places like Anytime Fitness or EOS, which is a great gym. And it can get as high as around $180 per month for places like F45 and Fit Body Bootcamp. Now if you go to like specialty Pilates classes, these are gonna cost about $250 per month. I won't mention who goes there. 
And there's a new trendy place called Ohm where you wear a fancy suit and it trains you using EMS technology. I don't know what that is, but that's the highest price fitness place you'll see. And that's $360 for 20 visits per month. Do the math on that. And one item that I'm asked about all the time is how much is it to build a pool? If you guys are interested in building a pool, it's gonna be about $50,000. Now it used to be $30,000 for a really cheap package. Now you're looking at about $50,000 because of costs, labor shortages, things like that. If you're interested in more on specifics on what it costs to build a pool, you can feel free to watch my video right here where I go through what it costs to build my backyard.